Sony ZV-E1 versus iPhone 16 Pro Max, which is the better content creation camera for you in 2025. Honestly, it's very hard to compare these two cameras because they are so different. One is a proper mirrorless camera that gives you the option to customize autofocus, quickly change settings with the buttons, connect any external device you want, like a microphone, HDMI monitor, and so on. Whereas the other is a smartphone that just so happens to be a great camera at the same time. Because of this, I'm mainly going to focus on the optical performance of these two devices to show you how much you sacrifice by using an iPhone instead of a pro mirrorless camera like the Sony ZV-E1. And the lens that I'm going to use to compare the iPhone to the Sony ZV-E1 is going to be the main 24 millimeter lens because that's the lens that delivers the best image quality on the iPhone. And I want to use the absolute best lens possible on the iPhone to have some chance for the iPhone to have some chance to compete in, uh, with the Sony ZV-E1. Now let's start with the obvious with these two cameras. Both can shoot in 4K up to 120p, but the Sony ZV-E1 has has a slight crop of about 10% when shooting in 4K 120p, which honestly does not bother me at all. It's totally fine. Next, both can shoot in 10 bit 4 to 2 with high quality codecs. The iPhone 16 Pro Max can shoot in ProRes 4 to 2 HQ internally with the Blackmagic camera application or externally to an external SSD, whereas the ZV-E1 can shoot with an XAVC SI uncompressed codec, which is not the same as ProRes 4 to 2 HQ, but it still delivers fantastic image quality for color grading and stuff like that. Now, moving on to the sensor size, the Sony ZV-E1 obviously has the bigger full frame sensor which delivers a wider dynamic range better load performance and so on whereas the iphone 16 pro max has a tiny 1 over 2.8 inch sensor but at least it has a low aperture of f1.8 which is equivalent to about f5 in full frame terms so right now my aperture is set to f5 on the sony zve1 with a 24 millimeter field of view which is the same field of view as on the iphone 16 pro max and the depth of field the how much the background is blurry should be the same between these two cameras at least right now however obviously if you put like a prime lens on the Sony ZV-E1, it's going to look much better because you can lower the f-stop as much as you want. Like, I mean, to the maximum you want, like f1, f1.2, f1.4, f1.8, and so on, and really blur out the background and, you know, improve the low-light performance and stuff like that. But honestly, having f5 on the iPhone is not such a bad thing because this thing is always going to be in your pocket. Like, the size difference between these two cameras is significant. Even right now, I'm using like a f4 zoom lens and the size between that lens only without the camera and the iphone is huge and the fact that i have a 24 millimeter equivalent lens with an f5 equivalent aperture to full frame is super handy to always have in my pocket all right next let's talk about log both cameras can shoot in a proper log profile to have the most flexibility in post-production to achieve the widest dynamic range and stuff like that the sony zv1 can shoot in s log 3 which i absolutely love and that's the profile i always use personally with this camera and the iphone 16 pro max can shoot in apple log which is a true log profile it's not the same as like d log m on action DJI action cameras and stuff like that. It's an actual like true log profile with a wide dynamic range that you can really push the limits in post-production and stuff like that. And honestly, in terms of like colors, I actually prefer Apple log, especially skin tones. Like right now I have the white balance set on both cameras to the same value. I think it's 5600 Kelvin and I'm not using any ND filters to not affect the colors and stuff. And you tell me which one you think looks better in terms of like my skin, which delivers better skin tone performance. Of course, without any enhancements in post-production, I'm going to leave it as is, but I am going to adjust slightly the exposure. All right, next, let me touch on dynamic range, which I believe is something that is better on the Sony ZV-E1, but by no means the dynamic range on the iPhone is bad. It's just that the ZV-E1 delivers a slightly wider dynamic range performance than the iPhone. All right, final thing that I want to talk about is low light performance between these two cameras. And honestly, I never ever use my iPhone 16 Pro Max in low light conditions, not because it's not good in shooting 
in low light, but because it creates these nasty looking lens flares from street lights and stuff like that, it looks very amateurish. So because of that, I would not recommend the iPhone for low light conditions. If you are okay with these lens flares, you can definitely use it in low light. But if we compare these two side by side in low light, the Sony ZV-E1 is definitely going to win because of the higher ISO, like second best ISO of 12,800. And if you pair it with a good prime lens, it's absolutely going to destroy the iPhone 16 Pro Max in low light conditions. But honestly, the overall performance in low light is okay. It's just that these lens flares, ah, they're so annoying. I, like, I, I don't like this, you know, these annoying little dots. All right, finally, I want to do a quick vlogging test so you can see how the stabilization performs on these cameras. The iPhone is set to standard stabilization in the Blackmagic camera app, and I have the active stabilization enabled on my Sony ZV-E1. Honestly, I think the stabilization performance is much better on the iPhone. Both have like IBIS, like optical stabilization stuff, but it's the digital stabilization where it makes the iPhone better in my personal opinion for like stabilizing vlogging shots. But yeah, this was like a dumb video in a way because obviously the Sony ZV-E1 is better <laughs> in terms of pretty much everything. But at the same time, the iPhone is not bad at all. Like I feel like these two cameras complement each other so well. That's the main reason I sold my Sony ZV-E10 because the iPhone can do what my Sony ZV-E10 was doing really well. I was using the Sony ZV-E10 as my B camera sometimes. Wow, this is heavy. And the iPhone can do that as well, even in the studio. Sometimes I use the iPhone in the studio to film like, you know, second angle shots and it works just fine without any issues. And just the fact that having such a great camera always in my pocket and it's so like thin, it's super valuable. But if you want the absolute best image quality from your camera and you want to quickly change settings, and you want to be able to easily monitor yourself and connect accessories like microphones, external monitors super quickly, the Sony ZV-E1 definitely wins.